What is happening everybody? Derek here from DW Designs and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, welcome. Subscribe, we'd love to have you part of the DW Designs team. As you guys can probably tell, rarely do I ever turn on all the lights in the shop. Well, that's because it is really early in the morning. It is uh, 4.16 in the morning to be precisely. And um, we're, it's gonna be a long day today. So we got a lot to do today. We gotta, like I said yesterday, we gotta um, melt that rubber off of those uh, bolts. That way we can back those bolts out. Today is also trash day and I need to fill up the trash can. And then after all that, then we gotta start figuring out a way to make the bumper and make it special, that's for sure. So, all right guys, with that, let's head to the intro. So sunlight has not come up yet. That's just my lights around here that I got like this one here. But real quick, something that always seems to amaze me is like when it's nice and cool outside and you walk past this door because I got all the fans going, you can literally feel the heat just being blown out of the shop always amazes me it just it's kind of interesting like wow like yeah it's like it's like 10 degrees warmer standing right in front of there so all right we're gonna head out to the subi right now and uh it's gonna be very minimal lighting so i apologize but i'll do the best that i can with the camera and uh we're gonna go get those bolts off right now so Let's do it. All right, so we got all of them out um, except for one. One is corroded so bad on there that it's actually stripped at this point. So we're gonna obviously have to replace that uh, bolt, but we'll probably just end up replacing all of them just for extra safety precautions since these things are not coming off easily. But if you look here, Come on, focus. You can see the corrosion on the bolt right there. And that's what's keeping it from coming out easily. So props to Subaru for making it nearly impossible to get them out, but at the same time, why? <laughs> There's no need to put rubber on the backside of them. So yeah, so now I'm gonna try a pair of vice grips with a uh, with a uh, cheater bar. And then if that don't work, well, I'm gonna take a sacrificial socket and weld it on there and break it loose. Cause I really don't feel like cutting it all apart to try and get it out because then that means I gotta deal with the stud afterwards as well. So it's just easier to weld a socket to it that can later on be used as another socket to be welded again and go from there. So obviously cheap ones guys, not not like snap on ones or anything like that so all right so i'm gonna get that off off camera um just to save you guys some time so i will see you guys shortly 
All right, so we're off to the races. Got it off. Um, last efforts to get it off, I managed to uh, find a sacrificial socket um, that was for some odd reason slightly uh, more snug on the bolt than the other sockets that I had. And I tried five different sockets before that. So I put it on there on last attempts and instead of trying to slowly turn it this time, I went ahead and smacked it really hard with a hammer and it broke loose. So we managed to back it out without having to cut well or anything, thank goodness, because I did not want to have to do that this morning if I'm being complete, com bleh, completely honest. I did not want to do that. So yeah, so it's off now, it's in the shop. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start taking measurements from bolt hole to bolt hole, start getting basically generic numbers down so that way we can start jumbling stuff around on paper and then once we kind of get it finalized on paper then we'll go ahead and put it in the computer and get it going on the uh, CAD software so that way we can uh, finalize everything in there before we start building because um, this bumper in particular I don't want to just build it like I did the front one because um, a, the back end is perfect. Um, it's not bent or anything like that. So I can get accurate measurements that will be based off of all the other Subies because I'd like to be able to um, make these off of the car if somebody liked to order one. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. Um, so yeah. All right, enough of me rambling on. Let's, uh, let's get to measuring this thing up and uh, jotting some numbers down and get to it. So. All right, let's do it. Okay, so if you guys caught me doing that a little bit, I was staring at this a little bit uh, towards the end of that last clip there. And I was because I was scratching my head going, why is this look like it's angled in here and angled in over here? But the truth is, is not. It's actually flat. It's an optical illusion. And that's where things start getting a little bit difficult if there's an illusion. So what I did to find out whether or not it was flat was that piece that we took off. Let me take you guys down here real quick. Sun's coming up. Man, it is a nice morning. It is super cool. It's not hot. It's probably like 70 degrees, very comfortable. So it's not terrible at all. Sorry about the fan, but I'm gonna leave it on because it's still blowing out hot air. But if you look, I know my concrete's pretty flat right here. And look at that, it's perfectly flat. all the way across, nice and flat. So it's not angled like it looks like it is. So that's something that you always have to account for. So if you guys ever decide to make something for yourself, always, always, always check to make sure that it's not just an optical illusion that's messing with your head because it will. And if you build it to that, it's not gonna fit and it's not gonna work properly. So, all right guys, I'm going to um, do a couple more things here um, off camera. One of them is I'm going to take measurements of all the sensors that are along the plastic bumper. And the reason for that is, is because I personally believe Subaru um, put them a certain distance apart on both sides. And just because of that, I want to make sure that I try and get it exactly the same um, on the bumper that we're going to be building so that way we don't have any electrical issues or any like weird funky stuff you know that there's you, some of you guys know what I'm talking about just you know you unplug one sensor or something stupid like that and then the whole car doesn't work so yeah we're trying to avoid that so 
All right, I'm gonna quit rambling on. Let's get back to work. Guys, this is where things start getting interesting. Um, lining up body lines, making sure that it looks nice and looks correct and all that stuff. So that's when we start busting out the tape here, getting some tape lines in. I'm actually getting ready to put a laser level on here and laser a nice straight edge across here before we uh, tape it up because we're gonna jump right into cutting this first so that way we know where all our body lines are gonna be finalized at so that way when we take measurements we know exactly where it's gonna be placed. Um, I actually learned that a little while ago um, that I should get the body lines first and then make the bumper to the body lines so that way it looks super clean. So we're gonna do that first. And let me tell you though guys, if it doesn't scare you at all, not even a little, well, good for you, but this, this is getting ballsy when you cut this stuff first and then fit it to it because then we're committed for sure. So, but that's okay. We're in it to win it. So let's get this thing let, uh, laid out and uh, get it cut as I should have taped, videotaped it because it was uh, quite a bit of work, but I had to take the tape on and off probably 50 times to get a nice layout where I wanted to cut. And we're cutting on the top of the line, not the bottom, but the top. And that'll be our starting point. So, cross our fingers that uh, we do it right the first time. So, and normally we do, but you know, you always have that in the back of your mind of, what if I mess up, you know? So, but we'll uh, get it cut here later today. I'm not gonna cut it right away this morning. Um, I just wanted to lay that out and get it ready to go. So, alrighty, well, let's, uh, let's head back inside. Well, let's take the rear bumper back off and then head back inside and then um, go from there. All right, so the scary and hard part is done. I know I said I wasn't gonna cut it earlier, but then I decided to cut it because I have some other ideas in mind as to why I wanted to cut it first. First is um, my father has one of those newer phones that can scan the whole rear end or scan whatever you want to scan and it turns it into a three-dimensional space piece two size all you got to do is like find a bolt hole or something on it and in the CAD tell it what size that is and it blows up everything the exact size and dimension that it's supposed to be which is really cool I have not played with that yet so 
I don't know. Don't hold me to it, guys, if I don't do it because I just I don't really know what to do with that. But we're going to try scanning it anyway after he's done with work today. Um, or maybe he'll swing by during lunchtime. I don't, I don't know. But probably either lunch or after work, we'll scan this and see if I can do it on uh, Fusion 360. We could do it on Fusion 360. I know that. But I don't know how to do it. So um, it'll be a learning process for me. But if I could do it and lay it out, or even like do it in Bentec and transfer it over and then put it on in um, Fusion 360, oh, that would be awesome. Because in that way, we know what we're getting before we make it. Sometimes you do it in Bentec and you're still a little bit like, uh, is it gonna work? Is it gonna fit? You know, kind of um, without, you know, taking it on, taking it off, taking it on, taking it off. Or putting it on, putting it up, taking it off. Man, I cannot talk this morning. So. Anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna start mocking up these plates that go here on some steel so we can get those made and on the vehicle. So that way we can have a reference point to start off of. So, all right, let's do All right, guys, so hopefully everything is lit up well enough. Looks like it is. The uh, power just went out, so yeah, so now I can't work. <laughs> well, anyway, a lot has happened since the last clip. Um, I was actually bandsawing these plates out. As you can see here, that basically replace these that go on the vehicle so that way I can weld some tubes right to these and attach the bumper right to it. So we got those all made up. Then I went ahead and took some one inch round bar stock and put a half inch hole through the middle of it. Um, same size as these holes. And then I cut them to eighth inch thick. And what those are going to be is they need cleaned up, but they're gonna be the weld on washers for that. So when the bolt goes on, go on just like this. I'm gonna buy new bolts, but they're gonna be a little bit longer. And that'll be extra beefy right there. So it can't possibly pull it, twist it or whatever, if it gets hit or you pull on it, whatever circumstances may be. So. My father did come by at lunchtime, as I predicted he would, and we scanned the Subaru in the phone, and let me tell you, it came out really good, but I haven't had a chance to uh, try it in the computer system yet. Um, and since the power just went out, and I have no idea when it's gonna come back on, um, I'm going to have to wait till tomorrow because I'm going to go ahead and go home since I've been here since four o'clock this morning. So it's been a long day. So I'll just go home and call it early. I'm going to have to edit this video at home <laughs> rather than here because usually I edit it here before I go home. All right. So uh, with that, that'll be it, guys. And I will see you guys tomorrow.